going to type talk 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 type talk about this because i think this is really incredible and in general i think this is a really good sort of example for the kids coming up nowadays and even for me it's definitely something that's super inspiring um seeing that i kind of know this guy from afar um and i've kind of seen his journey from i'd say the inception all the way until to this point where he's essentially building himself up to be like a mod you know a modern version of Giorgio armani with extra added bits on top which is pretty cool to see so this is courtesy of high part and it's regarding samuel ross the founder of a cold war presenting his first solo art show right solo art show at the white cube in bermondsey and if you've never been to the white cube gallery in bermondsey let me tell you it's fucking massive it's huge it's an amazing space an amazing building but it's huge so the fact that this guy has got enough work of the level and the quantity to warrant having a solo show in bermondsey or sorry the white cube in bermondsey says a lot about him really really does and it's a real good sort of testament to um his talent um, his perseverance his hard work and all this malarkey 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 so let's read the article a cold war founder and designer sammy ross has announced he'll be presenting a solo show at the white cube bermondsey southeast london the forthcoming exhibition will look set to explore the collapsed landscapes and force optimism that the black diaspora especially the wind rush generation people that arrived in the uk from 1948 1971 from the caribbean has experienced in post-modern britain placing emphasis on sculpture painting and additional elements of sound design furniture drawing and fashion informed by his studies concerning the class system in britain ross addresses the uncertainties of black london through abstraction uh, reduction industrial process and the motive for the sup supine body if i was being slightly critical well i'd say if it was me and I was able to present something like this and I've been kind of, you know, you're trying to break out of the pigeonhole. You don't want to be defined. I would go out of my way to not present any fashion. I would just leave that to the side. If I was Sammy Ross, I'll just say, you know what? I'm going to put my, I'm going to lay down my marker and show people what my powers are really and present to you an entire exhibition of fresh new ideas that are completely devoid from anything that you know me about, that, that you know of me. Don't get me wrong. The, you know, the fashion the sound design the furniture the drawing if you're a fan of the cold war you will know there's always been those themes tied in right they've been in intrinsically tied if anything he's probably he's probably um uh he's probably kind of pulled back a little bit from it um even though he was kind of i think the master of kind of in, in kind of weaving all those things together especially for somebody that isn't you know formally trained or anything but if it was just a classic exhibition especially in a place like called the white cube i would go out my way to just leave all the clothes and the fashion to one side there'll be nothing on there everything else would just be presented in what you'd expect to be presented in a contemporary art gallery loads of sculptures um you know loads of art loads of art in terms of photography mm -hmm. uh, paintings in terms of prints um in terms of installations all that stuff would be good but the fashion i'd leave it to one side if that was me is it possible to summarize the opportunity to bear and express the history memory and open emotions and experimentation within such a forum right dr ross this week will always be an emotional book will always be an emotional book what sorry this week will always be an emotional book i've had found let's go again this week will always be an emotional book i found expression through these mediums to be the best way to deal with comprehend and pay forward and accept the passing of a mentor who was so dear to me he continues referring to the late version abler all that we was as a generation of artists must stand must filter through our medium and our voices Sam Ross inside the white cube exhibition at the white cube Bermondsey will run from april 5th to may 21st 2023 and the fact they're announcing it now is absolutely cool so you can actually get ready for it and stuff but big up Sammy ross um this is a part of him as well uh this exhibition said uh, he says he on his instagram account honored and humble to exhibit at the white cube my solo show with the gallery will focus on the sculpture painting and elements of sound and soft work will be included it's impossible to summarize the opportunity to bear express your your memory open emotions and experimentation within such a forum and obviously the pictures that we've already seen here with some of the pieces that he's done prior and an amazing headshot that's going to be included there oh he's an actual doctor that's amazing okay well done to him um, that's pretty cool to see also but it's going to be great to see this all in real time and present it out there but it's going to be absolutely amazing but yeah big up Sammy Ross and everything that he's doing and what I wanted to touch upon as well this is what I think this is kind of maybe understand something because I remember when I was working with him from afar for a project I was doing for this online fashion school um, that was specifically centered around streetwear that's kind of the thing that I was kind of leading and helping to co-create um, 
the entire curriculum, which is absolutely hilarious, right? I've got no teaching background whatsoever, but I was able with the help of my um, other guy that I was working with to put together some this really rich and incredible curriculum that helped out quite a few people i know some people maybe didn't find any value from it but i think it did kind of help out a lot going forward in the whole thing but one thing i remember kind of taking away from meeting sam ross when i met him for the first time um was that he was very purposeful about making sure people knew exactly what he was about and he was very clear on that and i think that was a time when i was a bit more i'd say shy about the things i was into shy about presenting it shy about shipping it shy about showcasing it and he was very steadfast in kind of letting it be known what he was trying to do who he was eventually going to be and how he was going to do it and i feel like with him when it came to even the way that he spoke you know sometimes being you know overly worthy for the sake of it in my head i felt like or for the way that he presented his ideas maybe being some people would describe as being extra being theatrical or having a lot of pizzazz around stuff and maybe not having no substance in the work but now when things are starting to click and his work is starting to because i feel like there was a moment in the beginning where maybe the theatrics were sort of up here and maybe the work was down here but the interesting thing i thought about him was that it reminded me a lot of what i thought kind of classic streetwear was or let's not just streetwear like classic elements of like cut and sew right? you know, when when that cut and sew wave was sort of like an evolution or the next step up from streetwear the whole idea behind it was that hey we've been doing the streetwear thing printing our designs on these t-shirts on these aas on these hanes whatever it may be now we want to go a level above and we want to find the exact cut t-shirt that we like to print our t to graphics on so what you do is that you start doing cut and sew so you'd go to a pattern cutter or to a tailor and you'd kind of craft your own template or your own mold or whatever your own base whatever it may be of a t-shirt of how you liked it whether or not that neck hole was a certain diameter whether or not it was the shoulders how they dropped whether it was the sleeves or the body if it maybe had a bit of a it kind of maybe it stuck out a little bit on the side like a little t-shirt like a little triangle shape whatever it may be that was a kind of next evolution but the idea behind it was that we don't have the resources to do like that on the full thing, but we're going to do it with certain pieces. So I feel like when Sam Russell presenting his stuff, I felt like even though his work wasn't maybe where his theatrics were or where the kind of performance aspects of it was, there was always an intent behind it. And it was like, hey, once I get some funding, once I get some, you know, some help, once I get some, you know, experience, this stuff is going to catch up. But this is where my mind's at. And it took some time, but eventually the work became on par and now he's to a point where it feels like he doesn't need all the bells and whistles and theatrics anymore he can just present and it's all well and good but you look like some of the old shows you know the ones where they're walking you know through these amazing pieces that he's designed and they're strewn all over the runway i remember the one that struck out to me most was when there was this cube and this model came out burst out of it and it was covered in red paint that kind of performance you even you think back to the old school um died and sprayed uh, Air Force Ones that he did and how that evolved into a Nike collaboration and what the kind of genesis of that idea was going forward. That's pretty sick. And the guy isn't that old, if I'm not mistaken, right? 1991, he's what, maybe early 30s, maybe if that, if maybe just turned 30. So imagine the amount of work he's got, you know what I mean, to go um, going forward. And he's got the same level of kind of hustle not even hustle is a word, but it's a kind of a trite word to say. He's got the same work ethic um, and discipline and professionalism when it comes to his work and when it comes to his uh, practice, like uh, his mentor, Virgil Abloh, that you can't imagine him not going further because Virgil started, quote unquote, quite late. I think he got his brand off the mark, if I'm not mistaken, around like 35, 37-ish. So imagine if, you know, Samuel Ross started, you know, maybe 10 years before that. So maybe he was like, what, early 20s when he started doing fashion and started getting into that sort of realm. And now he's building this out forward. It's going to be amazing to see his evolution going forward. So this is pretty cool. And that's, like I said before, I think this is really inspiring for kids, myself, anyone going forward of like the limitations that you place on yourself are only the things that you place on yourself. And to always be purposeful and intentful in terms of your decisions, because similar to like, you know, when brands that come out nowadays and they want to be positioned next to certain brands so they price themselves in a certain way and it can look a little bit um, like you're kind of offending your customer base when you suddenly come out with a $600 funnel. 
but I can understand the idea behind it because you want to eventually get to the point where you have your own atelier, you have your own studios, you have your own factories, you have, you know, the ability to like craft garments in a way some of these high fashion brands are. But at the moment, your ideas maybe aren't there, maybe the execution isn't there right yet. So, but you want to make sure the customers and the fans are like, they know exactly where you stand and where you want to be next to. So you place yourself next to these big brands and these kind of designer luxury stores. And if the work is good, eventually it will kind of catch up with it and it'll get to that level. And I feel like that's what Simon Ross did as a kind of as a creative. He kind of essentially always pushed away from the streetwear thing, which I, you know, it's annoying for me because I'm obviously a streetwear advocate and I'm always going to fly that flag because it's given me so much in my life. But I can understand his kind of headier goals and where he was trying to go. And he was kind of, you know, making sure that, hey, let's put myself in a certain category. I've got this skill set. I've got this education you know uh, i've got this history in the game of doing stuff you know interning and helping out other brands and working on stuff blah 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 and we've other projects i've done on the side and this is kind of where i'm trying to go and like i said before he's gonna probably end up well you know all things things all things with all things being said he's probably gonna end up being like a you know like a flipping like a flipping Giorgio armani on steroids for sure like with added bits and bobs onto it so it's gonna be you know what i mean like a, those kind of collections that you see year in year out just churning out you know incredible looks evolving a tiny bit every single year but always providing a certain level of quality and you know and prestige and pristine and just whatever like you i'll just see it happening especially with these fan base too you think of how young they are and how they're growing up with a brand in real time I think it's going to be really cool going forward. So, yeah, I can't wait to see that one that does happen um, in April of next year. In April of next year.